All right. Good evening, fine people of the internet. Yes, indeed. Uh, no uh, silent gimmick this time. I am fully recovered from whatever that stupid illness was I had last week. I'm feeling pretty nice at the moment, so uh, you're getting a usual talking stream. Unlucky you. In any case, uh, so here's the stream that I said I was doing last week. Before that stupid illness took hold of me. So, tonight, we will be, uh, I'll be introducing you to a, uh, drum plugin that, uh, is sort of off the beaten path. That said, it is a commercial plugin. Uh, sort of an expensive one, but lucky for you, the company behind this plugin is actually having a Labor Day sale right now. So, if I sell you on this sample pack, well enough, then you should probably uh, go ahead and buy it while it's reasonably priced. Anyways, top of the lows. White Mage, Sinkle, T-Bird. That's fine. Uh, I'm glad you stopped in at all. Always a pleasure to have you here. As, no matter how brief it is. So, in any case, uh, as I said, this is uh, going to be far from a usual like again. Drum plugin nobody's heard of, but if you ask me, it's well worth uh, looking into. If uh, you uh, hear what you hear here, very eloquent, I know. If you like what you hear, again, I still highly recommend uh, getting it. So, before we actually take a listen to it in a track, I think I'll just go ahead and uh, briefly show you the interface. I said briefly show you the interface. There we go. So there it is. And uh, yes, indeed. That's a nice little gimmick of the interface. They have uh, updates, basically DLC expansions, but in any case, this is how it comes uh, in a sense. Uh, so again, this is... Uh, they call the plugin straight out Ugratone Drums. The way it works is that uh, you just get this one plugin. Uh, it's a lot like it functions a lot like AC Drummer. The way they used to work is that they basically had the they had this one engine that they used for all their plugins, but uh, now they're basically centralizing it a bit more, all in one. So that's enough waffling. Uh, first, uh, I'm going to introduce you to a. Uh, the uh, pack that I like the best. This right here is uh, the Speed Metal expansion. The very first expansion that they set out for this. So let's have a listen. Pretty brutal, I would say. Uh, all of that said, I actually have these uh, affected at the moment. I'll uh, show you the dry stuff later. So that's hardly an out-of-the-box sound, but we can uh, get to that when we get to that. Because at the moment, I'm just trying to show you what it can sound like, should you put the work in. And to that effect, I've actually come up with a little, uh, brief little ditty to show that off on top of that. However, uh, to say that I wrote the song is a bit of an overstatement, in all honesty. Uh, what I actually did was I uh, took an easy bass MIDI file that came centered with the plugin, wrote the bass line that way, and then made a guitar part that pretty much just follows that. So, uh, in the words of Jake Lizio, saying I wrote it is a bit of an overstatement, but... Uh, a better way to put it would be that I facilitated his existence. But in any case, uh, let's just uh, show you what the quote-unquote finished product sound like. We're going to work backwards a bit tonight. So let's have a listen.
So again, uh, I would say that sounds pretty acceptable for uh, not being mastered or anything. And again, before you get real impressed with the composition, again, I did not write that. That was just uh, somebody else's MIDI file that I basically just changed the key, and that's basically all I did. As far as the bass line goes. Uh, the guitar part took a little more doing to program, but still, it's still the same part. And again, uh, the other thing you may have noticed is that that part was uh, exceedingly simple. But again, there was a reason for that. This is a drum stream. We don't give a shit about that guitar and bass. At least at this function junction. Uh, we'll uh, change up their sounds a bit later when I'm showing off what else Yugotone drums can do, but for starters, that's just how it is. So again, you've heard the quote-unquote finished product. Let's uh, go a bit further into the weeds. We'll start by showing off some of the functions of this plugin as it is. So as you can see, if I highlight any given part of the kit, see, you can see the instructions right there on screen. Right click to preview the drum part, and if I click the left, we open this little panel here where I can do some mixing, pick what specific sample I want to play, or change one of these. Uh, go to one of these folders. So this is the first, uh, this is the mix folder. Pretty self-explanatory, and if I move on to effects, there's basically a way to, uh, you can basically put it through some EQ, change the pitch, compress it, or send it to some other reverb. Pretty handy, but uh, I didn't use any of this for this uh, specific, uh, not for this uh, project. I might use them in a later if I decide this is going to be my daily driver as far as drum samples goes, but that's for later. And then below that, one shot sample. So what this does is that if you install uh, Yugotone drums, it comes with its own uh, nice little pack of uh, additional samples. Because uh, again, these are one shots. The way most of the professional drum plugins work is that it isn't just one sample ever when you're firing something off. Because that would sound horrifically unrealistic. What they do instead is something called Round Robin, where it's a it's an entire pack of samples that roughly correlate to one part of the kit, one articulation of it, and one hardness level of it. So basically, so, to explain this as simply as I can, this preview here would be the kick drum, and it would be, uh, usually when you're previewing a part of the kit, in any drum plugin, uh, it's usually the maximum velocity, 127, as in, as hard as a human being can hit it. So the way a drum plugin usually works is that there would be a few samples of somebody hitting something as hard as they can. Usually three, but can be as many as five or six if they're feeling really extra, if they really want it to sound realistic. But obviously, the more samples a drum plugin comes in with, the more RAM uh, resources, computer-wise, that it takes. And in a lot of cases, the more expensive it is. Because it's a lot of work recording drum uh, machines like this. It seems like the simplest thing in the world, but it is not. So, that was a bit of a tangent, but I had to go on to explain what the one-shot sample is for. This is essentially uh, Yugotone's way of allowing you to use a very common production trick, not just with uh, drum samples, but also live drums, where you uh, pick a sample and you use it to augment an acoustic drum hit. That said, uh, if I were to go with my usual modern metal, sort of clean, high production uh, sound, this is the only sample I would want to use. This is called Subkick. And what that is, is it's just, uh, it's only even a sample in and of itself. It's basically just uh, a basic, almost synthesizer sort of sound. 
that is, in the sub-base range, hence sub-kick. And pretty much all it's doing is just adding extra low end to the kick drum, just making it sound beefier. Making it so that it blows out your subwoofer. You like that sound, don't you? That said, that's not your only option. There's a whole shitload of other kicks here that you are well within your rights to use, but I don't usually uh, mess with any of them. Because that's usually my style. Also, that's fine, T-Bird. Have a good shift. Uh, still glad to have seen you. Whatever. See you later. Now, uh, you'll hear these samples when we uh, mess around with other presets, kits, whatnot. But, again, that's for later. And again, every single kit, every single element of the kit has its own uh, panel just like this. Its own amount of instruments you can pick to replace certain parts. A lot of options, especially if you use at least one expansion. I have three of them, I will show them all in due time. So again, this is the basically a custom kit of mine. Let's see, do I have this saved? Yeah, I should probably save this before I go any further, just so that if I like uh so I can keep this sound. Should I desire to use it again. That said, uh, that will require me to go into my file explorer, and I do not want your people seeing my file files. I've been a little uh not cautious enough about that, I think, in the past. So, I'm going to fix that. I'm going to call a break. Fucking... Not even 20 minutes into the stream. That's gotta be a new record. But, it has to happen. So, please bear with me a moment. I will be right back. back, pardon the interruption, but we are ready. So, as you can see here, uh, these are the three packs that Ubertone drums uh, that I happen to own. You can buy any one of these and you'll get the same plugin, largely. The only difference will be the uh, GUI and what samples are available to you, and the presets, of course. So, to properly show off what's happening here, I obviously gotta pick up another preset. But to do that, I might have to alter the guitar tones a bit. So this is what I use on the... This is the single chain I used in this particular track. Dr. Drive, TACX50 1.0.2. This is a free amp sim, but it's technically abandoned wear. TAC would probably rather you buy 2.0 for 80 bucks on their website, but... We had a lot of other people... Disagree. I don't think they're gonna break your legs for using this instead of two, but you didn't hear it from me. And of course, uh, my usual Devil's Lab Magma Impulse. Love this one. But in order to 
properly show off the capabilities of this, uh, at least a speed metal pack, I need to unlock a certain other impulse pack that I just realized I probably don't even have zipped, so I gotta call a break again. I am the picture of preparedness here, I'm sorry. It was a busy day, I had a ref sheet to fucking make, and debuts to watch. So, sue me. Again, be right back. Interruption, again I am back. So anyways, uh, now that that's out of the way, it's time to show you what I was talking about a minute ago. So let's change presets real quick. Speed Metal. So we're going to go through some of these. However, there are three in particular that I'm interested in, and you probably know which ones. 1984 Bells. 1986 Puppy Master. And 1989, Tight Metal. For those of you who don't get the reference, those are all Metallica-based kits. This one based on the Ride the Lightning sound, this one Master of Puppets, and this one, And Justice for All. All three fantastic classic albums. The only thing missing from that era is Kill em All, obviously, but uh, that would take a little more doing. You can probably do it with this kit, but I wouldn't know how. So, let's start with 1989 Type Metal. Why not? Let's load it up. Give it a second, because obviously there's a lot of samples here. Plus, uh... Yeah, so while we wait, uh... Again, I like this, uh... The kick drum, the kick sound out of my, uh... Professional, my own preset that you heard a minute ago, was actually from this particular kit. Art Star Metal. Because a lot of the crux of this uh, particular sample pack was that it was based on a Tama Art Star drum kit. Which may or may not have been what Lars used to use before the Black Album. Not sure if that's accurate or not, but if it is, they went the extra mile. Again, it's not all metallic all the time, it's speed metal. They were not the only game in town. As a matter of fact, this isn't all metal all the time either. But we'll get to that when we get to that. So, let's check out the 89 sound. Hmm. I should probably mute my reverb, just to clean it up a bit. That should make it a little more obvious. Uh, oh yeah, these two tracks. That's another feature I forgot to mention. So, this is one of the gimmicks of uh, Yugo Tone drums in general. These two mics. This one is called the Trash Mic. And this one is called the Hell Mic. Let's start with the Trash Mic. So in the case of the Speed Metal expansion, what it does is that it activates a uh, gated reverb. Very 80s sort of sound, which is suitable for speed metal, 80s on the ground shit. Very suitable for that. And then the trash mic. That's what I just did, and then the hell mic, silly me. Does absolutely nothing in this preset, but it does very interesting things. Especially when we get to cult drums, that's gonna really open your eyes. It's gonna live up to its damn when we get to it. So, 
So, with that sample pack picked, let's go ahead and uh, make the song in general sound a little more justice-y. And to that effect, we're also going to replace this. Uh, again, Dr. Drive, one of my usual weapons of choice, but to properly use this, uh, to properly use something later in the signal chain, I have to change to another plugin. TSE 808, there we go. So, drive at minimum, which I already did on the other, volume max, and tone about here, almost max. And for this, this requires a plugin that I forgot to install again. Good lord. Uh, okay, break time again. Okay, that was silly me, but again, I am back. So, here we go. A plugin so updated that it's only in 32 bit. This is TSE X30. This one is free and actually still available from their site, TSE's site. Although they do warn you that it's very out of date, but we need this in order to use the next piece of the puzzle. Which is, if we go back a bit, my impulse response folder, Metallica Golden Classics. This is what we're looking for here. So, the gimmick behind these impulse responses is they make them, they make your guitar tone sound exactly like certain Metallica records, as in an exact match for their tone without having to go through all the trouble of playing with knobs, picking the right impulse responses, none of that. Just throw this impulse on and you're already part of the way there. So, we're going to pick Justice Stereo LR, because the way, uh... Alternatively, you can also load the left and right impulses in different windows, but I'm feeling lazy, I only need to use one. So we're going to use LR. And we're going to leave everything else at default. Just to really not dilute the sound at all. Copy this entire single chain. Okay, thank fuck, I wasn't using the wrong one. And there we go. Alright, one last double check. Yep, they both have the same single chain. So, let's take a listen now. Perfect match, but definitely closer to that sound. Which is probably half the reason because I forgot to add the guitar track to this particular track, but screw that. 
I got a whole bunch of pl I got a whole bunch of presets to show you and not much time to do it. So that's just a sound, so let's go ahead and switch to the rubber lightning sound. And it's going to take a second. So, yes. So again, if you're in a Metallica cover band, you probably want this uh plugin. Slash or one of those people who want to make those uh fun little uh covers where you're specifically trying to imitate a specific album. Like uh if you've heard if Spit Out the Bone was on Injustice for All, if Leper Messiah was on a black album, that sort of idea. Uh Green, welcome to the stream. Pleasure to see you. Uh it went, uh, it was off to a rough start. There was a bunch of shit that I had to install to, uh, properly show off the plugin that I forgot to put in, but I think I've got everything for the moment. So, we're just gonna go ahead and roll along. At the moment, I am showing off, specifically, the Speed Metal expansion to this particular, uh, plugin. Whose partial gimmick is that it gives you all the sounds of classic Metallica. And you have arrived just in time to listen to the Ride the Lightning sound. So let's listen to the dry drum samples. Very dirty 80 sound there. Exactly what we want. In a lot of senses. But again, that's only part of the equation if we're doing a full cover. So I'm not going to do all that again. All I got to do is change the impulse. And that's as simple as just scrolling over to some other one. Ride LR Stereo. Simple as that. That's what I was thinking about setting things up like this ahead of time. All right. So let's take a listen to... Whatever this stupid demo song is, the Ride the Lightning version. Let's get it. So again, not a perfect match, but certainly a hell of a lot closer to that sound than the Justice preset was. Uh, I'm probably not doing enough fuckery to perfectly match it, but again, that's not the point. I'm just trying to show you the intended use of some of these uh, drum plugins. That's all I'm after here. So with that in mind, let's move right along. Next preset, which is 86 Puppy Master. That's really fairly obvious what that one is. The good old Master of Puppets sound. Some real classic shit. And my personal favorite album out of the three. Kind of a cliche choice, but I love it. It's what set me on the path I'm on now. It's the entire reason I'm doing the stream right now for you. Otherwise, who even knows what I've been doing? Alright, it's loaded. Let's take a listen. Much of the same, very old school sort of sound. But again, to get the proper sound, we need to change the impulse. And it's very close by, because everything is in the same folder. Nice and organized, now that I've remembered to install everything. So, let's roll around, let's roll right along, let's take a listen.
Again, close. Still a nice vintage metal sort of sound. And just very nice, I think. All right, but that's enough of the Metallica cover band shit. Let's check out some of these other ones. Uh, 1982 punks, there's an idea. Let's see what this one's about. This would have been, uh, this is probably a preset I should have used, uh, that I probably still can use if you were there for my punk songwriting stream. I needed something nice and dirty and raw for that. This will probably suit that very well if I ever decide to go back and finish that. Might take a minute, though. This is going to be a busy month for me music-wise. I got a bunch of shit to do. A bunch of secret projects that I didn't, cannot disclose now, but you will hear it, if not this month, then next month. Either way, uh, can't disclose it, but look forward to it. And understand if I can't really afford to really fuck around and do random shit. Anyways, let's listen to the preset. Thank you very much, Green. Ah, uh, and here we go, our first preset that actually uses the Hell mic. So this is effectively just another, uh, layer. Yeah, reverb's too intense on this particular preset. Reverb doesn't sound very punk. But you know what does? Whatever this is doing. Yeah. So, uh... In a lot of senses, uh... You could argue that these are... Sort of, uh, switched around. They should call this one the trash mic. So yeah, if I wanted to make it sound specifically like shit, this is the mic I would want to use, but... Nah, I'm good for that. I don't need that uh, at the moment. For demonstration purposes, I'm fine with just having it as an element and not the entire star of the show. Alright, so if we're doing punk, that means we gotta do my usual, uh, punk idea. Get rid of this plugin. We'll replace it with hybrid. Nice little Marshall plugin. Boost it and crank absolutely fucking everything. Because that's what punk is all about. And as for the impulse response, uh, Let's see. Yeah, we'll look at here. This one has some, uh, let's see. I think, I'm thinking a 2x12 or 1x12, uh, because I'm going for a combo amp. Combo amps are punk. Those small little, uh, garage sort of things, uh. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, so, you know that one cousin you have, who was a guitar player and you thought was the coolest thing ever, and they had that one little box amp that had all the crazy effects on it. That was probably a Line 6 Spider. That is pretty much uh, the first thing a lot of people think of when they think combo amp. The absolute bane of the existence of a lot of producers. Because those amps are really not ready for professional uh, use. And yeah, we'll crank that drive over here too, why not? Everything maxed. That's fucking punk. That... Get rid of this, paste it over here, and we probably want to turn this bus way down. Let's hear it.
Apparently my idea wouldn't work. The hell mic's too quiet for that. At least by default. So I could probably uh, max it out in the uh, actual plugin, but either way, I think you get the idea. Very uh, gritty, almost lo-fi sort of sound. Which again, probably means something completely different to a lot of you, but... It generally just means low fidelity. The hip-hop genre does not have a monopoly on that uh, particular uh, term. Anyways, uh... So yeah, it could be even dirtier, but again, that would require some actual mixing work, which is not the point of the stream. We're showing off a plugin. And to that effect, we're going to move on to... Let's see. 1988 Florida. Sure. Let's do some old school death metal type shit. Why the fuck not? And to that effect, we will be waiting for this to load, but the guitar song could really go a lot of ways. Uh, this would actually be somewhat easier if I had... Uh, Yggertone actually has their own impulse response library that uh, would probably be useful for this. Uh, they have a lot of old-school death metal uh, sort of plugins, but if I do own it, I don't have it installed, and I'm not going to go through that dosido you know, again. I'm not going to sit through another... going to make you sit through another break. I think I've used up my allowance of that for the stream, so we're just gonna go ahead and move on. That sure sounds like old school death metal to me. Kicks a little too loud, let's turn it down. Perfect. Snare's a little too quiet, let's bring it up. That sounds about right. So, old school death metal. There was only one way to go for that. Replace it. And we're going to use MTA. Metal Zone. AKA the uh, exact sort of pedal a dumb basement garage band would probably use. I'm not going to go through the effort. Uh, I should probably actually go through, uh, sort of dial it in, but again, that's not the point of the stream. Now for an old school death metal, uh, sort of, uh... Alright, now what am I talking about? I have a way to do this. And for that, we're going to go to the best plugins. So, best plugins. That's the reason uh, we're doing this weird shit with the outdated 32 bit plugin. Because, best plugins is the name of a gear reviewer from ye olden days of 2013. He was very good at what he did, but for some reason he just fell off the face of the earth around 2015 or so. And nobody knows what the hell happened to him. But his legacy lives on through this particular amp plug-in set. Problem was, he had a very idiosyncratic way of dialing in his tones, and you have to imitate that if you want to, uh, properly use his impulse responses or the impulse responses of anyone inspired by him. Fortunately, that's easy enough. So. Drive at nothing, volume max. Tone, almost max, as you put it. X30, everything at noon. Leave it alone. And then, finally... This impulse response. Any one of his impulse responses. Let's see. Beyond Creation, Black Label Society, uh, Cannibal Corpse, there we go. That's what we should be doing. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to stick with his uh, impulse responses for the rest of this, uh, sort of, uh, for the rest of the stream. Because if I'm going to want to imitate certain bands, this would be the perfect way to do it. 
that's it. I should probably take a closer look. See if there's anything uh, a better sort of a plugin I could use. Because uh, these were actually fairly easy to make. His method was, if you have a record and they have any uh, parts where it's just a single guitar playing, then you can make an impulse response out of their guitar tone. Their finished guitar tone. It's really that easy. Let's see. Shut up, biker dude. Uh, you know what, we'll go with Six Feet Under, why not? They're not exactly old school death metal, but they're probably good enough for this sort of demonstration. Not that I've listened to them, but... I would assume that they have an old school death metal sort of sound still. At any rate, that's enough waffling. Let's see what this 1988 Florida old school death metal sort of uh, drum plugin sounds like. Okay, so I dig that sound way more than I thought I would. That's actually pretty nice. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'll have to experiment with that in a song, uh, at some point soon. But that's enough of that. Let's see. Uh, 1986 Blood Ray, why not? So for those of you who don't get the reference, that's fucking Slayer. Again, uh, sort of the other big name in speed metal. So in some ways, that's another name for thrash metal, but again, uh, it's right in the name. Speed. The entire point of the this particular uh, genre, label, whatever you call it, is that they play as fast as they can. And Rain and Blood is probably one of the finest examples of playing as fast as you can and making it sound good. Again, sounds very dirty, very, uh, nice. So, let's go ahead and look for the impulse. Uh, okay, so they don't specifically have, uh, they don't specifically have the rain and blood tone, but I think South of Heaven should be close enough. So, let's go into, uh, the other guitar. Slayer, South of Heaven. Perfect ish. So, let's hear what this sounds like. So it doesn't sound exactly like a Slayer song, which you gotta expect. I didn't exactly write this, uh... This MIDI wasn't exactly inspired by Slayer. But... The sound's there, at the very least. I like that. Nice and brutal. Yeah. Okay, so in, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and move on to a different, uh, plug-in. So... Let's go ahead and check out some of the, uh, let's move on to Cult Drums 2. Cult Drums 2. Which is essentially the groundwork for this entire plugin, Yugurtone Drums. 
The way they used to do it was that everything was just an expansion of the cult drums, too. This was their centerpiece, and in a lot of ways it still is, but they slightly rebranded. So, instead of saying it's an expansion to cult drums, too, they say it's an expansion to Yugurtone drums. Slash, it's the other way around. Uh, cult drums, too, is an expansion of Yugurtone drums now. But still a lot of historical significance here. Uh, this is still sort of a crown jewel. Mostly because this is uh, really what put them on the map in the first place. Cult Drums 1 was uh, what really put them on the map. Because before that, nobody was really doing like dirty, lo-fi metal drum kits. All the major drum uh, plugins were giving you polished, absolute, uh, just very high production value sort of sounds, like finished, polished sounds for mainstream consumption. But no, Yugurtone saw that there was a demand for, yeah, this shit sounds too clean. I want something dirtier. I want something grittier. I want something, dare I say, cult. And so that's what they provided. So yeah, not the most high fidelity sound in the world. And even so, they're still on the cleaner end. A couple of these are pretty insane. Especially True Cult, but we'll get to that. So, I don't want to go full cult quite yet. I'm going to ease you in. So for that, let's see what we got. Let's see. Immortal, there we go. That should suit us just fine. Nice and grim, but not completely, uh... There's still some slight appeal. It's still somewhat listenable. So, let's go ahead and show you Cult Drums 2 Default Preset. So yeah, that's Cult Drums 2 as it comes right out of the box. Already, uh, definitely not quite as clean as other plugins, but again, that is the point. That's what they were going for. And now that we're back to Cult Drums 2, I can finally talk about the Trash and Hell mics in a little more detail, as they were originally intended. So let's start with the Trash mic. And now the hell mic. So I'm going to be level with you, I don't know which is which, but I do remember that one of these, either Trash or Hell, was recorded with a basic SM57 just on the floor, roughly next to the drum kit. Which is not a smart way to record drums in any professional sense, but again, professionalism was not what they were going for. They were going for dirty, grim, cult, and that's pretty much as good of a that's as good of a recording technique as any for that. But either way, these are both basically very specialized room mics that are intended to just give you a dirtier edge, which again is what you want. That said, enough fucking around. It's time to introduce you to. True cult. Now we're going to show you the real shit. Now we're going to go full 
the full essence of black metal. No more holding your hand. No more uh, Mr. Nice Guy. No more Mr. Palatable. Now we're going full fucking cult. As soon as this thing loads. And if you think that's insane, just wait till I get to the guitar. That's gonna blow you away in all the wrong ways. So let's take a listen. Soul. That's still a little cleaner than any given uh, black metal dude would want it, but for this purpose, it's fine enough. So, for black metal guitar tone, couldn't be simpler. No impulse at all. Which is usually not advisable whatsoever for a good guitar tone, but again, we're after grimy, we're after disgusting, nasty. And not the good kind of nasty, like an HM2. Like, just straight up, I don't want to listen to this shit. Or else, wow, this is so grim that I actually sort of dig it. Your mileage may vary, but either way, let's check it out. So if you're not into black metal, I'm sorry to subject you to that. If you are, I'm sorry for only getting the broad strokes of your genre. It's probably good music, especially if you do it right, but... I'm not trying to do it right, I'm trying to do it quick. Because again, not exactly the point. So, next preset. While we're on the subject of uh, disgusting sounds nobody wants to listen to, fuck it. Saint Ranger, here's an impulse for you. If that wasn't enough ear violation for you, then here comes a second dose. Arguably even worse. Saint Ranger. If you don't get the reference just from the name, then allow me to spell it out for you. This is yet another Metallica tone. Specifically the infamous, controversial, critically reviled, fan reviled, but still has some defenders. 2003 album, Saint Anger. Yes, here we go. The infamous trash can snare. No wires. Because that's actually a critical component of why the drums sounded the way they did. Essentially, what a snare drum is, is that there is a mechanism attached to the drum that has what is called underwire, or a snare. And if that's nice and tight, then you get the regular, nice, attacky sort of snare drum. But if you turn them off, this is what you get. Just this ringy, trash can sort of sound that not many people like. So, now we get back to the guitar tone portion. So, we're coming out of this folder... And back to the Golden Classics, because 
every Metallica album has uh, impulses like this, uh, although there's a reason for that. I'm sure you all remember Guitar Hero Metallica. Uh, never mind, apparently uh, it's not part of this pack. Uh, well, I got kind of caught with my pants down there. Uh, maybe it's back in the bus plugins. Uh... Yeah, that's embarrassing. I may have to settle for something close enough. Yep, no St. Anger Impulse. That's strange. I could have sworn there was one, but... Onwards and upwards. Uh... Yeah, we'll go with this Mesa Boogie Mark II C. That's a very classic... Uh... Metallica amp. Or maybe it was the Mark V. Either way, uh... Can't really go wrong with Mesa if you want to imitate Metallica. Alright, so... Let's listen to this Saint Ranger preset. Let's take a listen. Not as close as I would have liked, but again, time crunch. You got the point of the plugin, anyways. Uh, you got the pre you got the point of the preset, anyways, which was the nasty trash can snare, and in a lot of senses, that's all I cared about. Let's see. Uh, Norwegian Chicken Shack. That sounds like another uh, grim sort of uh, preset. We'll check it out. Why the fuck not? So again, uh, this is sort of a niche use case. Uh, well, I say that, but no. If you stick to just the default sort of sounds, then that's much easier. Uh, that's sort of the reason for the uh, default kit. You can just choose the unbastardized sort of samples and just uh, go from there. So that's the drum sound, again, uh, lives up to its name. Okay, Nod Tear. I've never heard of this band whatsoever, but that sounds like a very black metal sort of name, so we'll pick that to, oh, motherfuck not. And let's take a listen to this preset. Norwegian Chicken Shack. Sounds pretty damn grim to me. Alright. Alright, I think that's enough of the cult drums, too. You get the point of this one. And that's a lot of the, uh... So a lot of the point of this. You get your, uh, nasty presets. You got your, uh, cleaner presets. Let's move on to the last one. One that I've actually haven't been able to mess with much in the past. But I finally get to, thanks to this complete code overhaul. 1978 Assault. So, this used to be known as Assault Drums, and its gimmick was, it was meant to imitate the uh, new wave of British heavy metal. 
specifically late seventies, early eighties. Uh, Iron Maiden, Tigers of Pantang, Judas Priest, that sort of sound. Which is a sound I really like. But for the longest time, I was convinced this particular sample set was fucking cursed for me. I bought Assault Drums when it first came out, and the plugin just absolutely refused to work for me. I installed it like five times, failed every single time. Every time, I would load it up in the DAW, it refused to load, and eventually the DAW would crash. So I stopped using it. But then, the variant for Cult Drums 2 came out. The update. So I tried installing it again, because I was like, you know what, I'm gonna try the sample set that I paid for. I like the new wave of British Heavy Metal sound, I wanna mess with it. Largely the same thing happened, uh, although not exactly. Apparently I installed it in the wrong folder, or else it installed itself in the wrong folder. And I simply could not get the sample set to load whatsoever. So I couldn't use it again. But then, finally, the Yugratone drums update came along. That just consolidated everything into one plugin. And finally, I was able to install it in the right place, and able to actually use it as it was intended. And it was a glorious day. And I don't like how long this is taking to load. This makes me think that the curse... Never mind. Just finished. Fantastic. I guess it just takes longer when you're uh, switching sample sets. Okay, 1978 default. Let's take a listen. So yeah, the kick drum is really where the... Uh... In a lot of ways, that's what really gives a new wave sound. Uh, new wave of British heavy metal sound. Gotta be careful, there's another genre entirely called New Wave that's basically the polar opposite. But yes. This kick sound, often called basketball kicks. Get it? Because it sounds sort of like a basketball being dribbled on a basketball court. So yeah. I could really, uh, potentially mold it into my own sort of sound, but again, not the point of the stream, and, uh, yeah. So, let's get the right guitar tone for this. So yeah, new wave of British Heavy Metal, uh, drum kit. That means we need a new wave of British Heavy Metal, uh, guitar tone. And conveniently enough, Iron Maiden Power Slave. Perfection. So, we're just gonna scroll up. Iron Maiden Power Slave. So, here's the lost New Ever British Heavy Metal Classic. So I've already noticed something rather strange about this uh, particular drum plugin. Uh, the cymbals are too damn quiet, and that's mostly because they don't have their own dedicated mic like every other uh, sample pack. It's all just part of the overhead. That is rather unusual. But maybe that's just how it sounded back in the day. But yeah, let's move on. So apparently there aren't many presets. Uh, dry, fat, mini, psycho punk. Yeah, we'll try dry next. Why not? I'm usually not a dry drum sort of guy, but the entire point is that this is a walkthrough, so we might as well give it a fair shake. Fair little listen. Because again, that's just how they did things back in the day. Some producers just preferred to Leave their drum sounds as unmolested as possible. And in a lot of ways, that mentality lives on into the modern day. There are some genres of death metal where uh, the drum parts are so crazy that you just can't really uh, wash them in reverb or uh, else uh, 
they'll just sort of get lost in the mix. So, yeah, there's uh, advantages to keeping things dry, but again, I prefer my drums to sound massive. So, that's why I make a lot of the mixing decisions I do. Uh, this is taking a minute to load. So, apparently, uh, I'm not completely free of the curse, but it's not as bad as it used to be. I suppose I can dig it. And there we go. And again, we're going to make sure these are loud enough to actually be hearable in the mix. And we're not going to change the guitar tone at all. Power Slave is good enough. So let's take a listen. So, so far, this doesn't sound like anything I would use usually, but again, sometimes I just want to imitate the uh, good old ways, and that seems good enough for that, so uh, I think we'll listen to the fat preset and then just call it a, we'll call it a walkthrough, because I still have a lot of features to show you, but to do that, I think I'm going to go back to the default uh, speed metal pack. That seems to be my safe area as far as... Uh, what uh, I like to uh, use in my actual mixes. And even then, uh, yeah. Like, if you're watching this and thinking, why would I use this instead of Easy Drummer? If you're a truly professional, uh, well, really there's one reason you would want to use that above any other, and that is these samples don't get used much. Like, Almost every metal producer where their salt has a copy of Easy Drummer. Especially the Metal Machine sample pack. Everybody's heard that. Like, I could just play one of the samples right now and I could ruin, like, 90% of commercial metal and a whole lot of other, like, professionally recorded recordings for you. I could completely kill your immersion. But that's not the point of this. Because if you use this sample set, any of the Ugratone sample sets, you can avoid that issue altogether. And not quite in that word, Saint. Uh, not quite in those words, Saint, but in a lot of ways that is pretty accurate. Just don't do what everybody else does if you want to stand out. Like, especially now that I'm using this uh, sample pack again, I get the feeling that I'm really going to be able to, uh, get a little closer to finding a sound that's more my own. Because that should be your goal in music in general. Just find your own way. Have your own truly unique sound. But that's enough of that. Uh, that's enough of the, uh... Waffling, let's just go ahead and listen to the preset. So yeah, still sounds like 70s drums. Which is a nice sound, but that's probably not what I'm going to use on a regular basis. So, let's go ahead and go back to the kits you heard at the beginning of the stream. 
which I fittingly enough called Cliff Speed Kit. Although much like Easy Drummer, you don't need to stick to one preset pack. If you have multiple Yugurtone sample packs, you can mix and match them, just like you can Easy Drummer. You can use a kick from Cult Drums too, a snare from Assault Drums, toms from Speed Metal, cymbals from all those different packs. Like, it's that easy. So that said, I should probably go ahead and, uh, now that we're going to be true walkthrough, I think I'm going to go ahead and, uh, show off, uh, certain functionalities of this plugin a little better. So let's start with the snare. More specifically, the one-shot samples. I didn't go over this well enough, I think. So. Let's disable the one shots and I'll uh, show you what exactly is up here. This is how it sounds dry. So, let's turn on the sample I was using again. Adds a lot more body to it. However, that's not our only option. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, just let the snare track play and just pick out random samples and just see how they sound together with it. Yeah, that's a little more Saint Angry there, not one I'd use. Yeah, industrial snares are pretty much just basic uh, electronic samples. Which, come to think of it, is actually a method I could use. Uh, you don't have to use uh, the provided samples. You can just, if you have any sort of a sample that you want to layer it with, you can just bring it in. But I'll show that off in a second. So yeah, quite a lot of options there. Gives you a lot more uh, different characters. But the problem I've run into with a lot of these, uh, something that I think would, uh, like for my personal use case, uh, a lot of those had a lot of pre-reverb, as you can see. They uh, already had some effects baked into them, and that's not really what I want, considering uh, reverb is a very big part of my own workflow as it is, so I probably wouldn't use those. So that said, uh, I think Die Switch Snare was what I wanted to use. See, it still adds some more character, adds some nice uh, harmonics, but 
doesn't completely make it sound ridiculously reverby. Let's hear what sounds in the mix. Right after I change it up a bit. All right. So now I just realized I forgot to uh, change this back to uh, what I had before. Okay, factory smooth booster. There we go. Replace this with the uh, X50. There we go. Low six, high four, mid six. Low end four, present six. I think that's what it is. If not, that's what I'm going with. Go back up here. Devil's Lab, Gar, Magma. I hope it was Tonate that I used because that's what I'm going with. And I'm not going through all that clicking through again, so I'm going to copy this single chain. Paste it back over to this half of the single, this track. There we go. That should be roughly how it was when I first uh, logged it in. So let's take a listen. Exactly how I had it, but it's close enough. Ah, forgot to put the playback on. Now this is sounding more me. That's more like it. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot. The same sample thing, uh, you can also apply it to the toms too. And again, there are a lot of options there, but I don't really feel like I need it. Usually the toms sound good enough as they come. Let's see, I think that's everything that I had to discuss, so... I think I'll just go ahead and, uh... I think I'll just try another uh, sample, why not? I'll try to uh, layer it with a custom sample. Fuck it. That said, that requires me to probably browse files, and I don't want you to see that, so I gotta put you on break again. Last one, I promise, otherwise I will have to do some stupid punishment. You can come up with one while I look for the sample I want to use. One second, please. Actually, on second thought, uh, I think we're... Wow, that was silly. I went into the wrong damn thing. Anyways, uh, I don't think there's anything too incriminating in here, so fuck it. Samples, there we go. A metal kick drum. There we go. So, this would be a nice way to get a free drum kit, except for the fact that uh, it's sort of a pain in the ass to uh, get it to work properly with any uh, proper free, uh, with any of the free uh, drum kit sampler sort of things. Like I showed you resample Omatic in my last stream. Uh, you probably could set it up if you worked at it well enough, but yeah, it's a bit of a pain. And I just realized I forgot to extract them all. Fuck my life.
right, I'm back and I've extracted them all. Good lord. If only I could, uh... If only I was smart and actually prepared those ahead of time, uh... Well, I'm glad at least you enjoy my, uh... Standby music, Ray. Uh, I actually forget which track I used to place that, uh... But, fuck it. You enjoy it, that's all that matters. Anyways. So... Little update for anybody new in here. Uh, the current drum sample I'm trying to use here has a function where you can layer it with samples. So, snare sample. Let's look in here. Snare sample. Black Beauty. Sure. Which is what BB stands for. Ludwig Black Beauty. Okay, here we go. Wave. And I believe it's one of these that I want to use. Because if I recall correctly, these are in order of velocity. Yeah, well, this is the last one. Sounds pretty good to me. Let's see how well it fits into the mix. Turn it down slightly. Sure. All right. Now let's get the mix going. Let's hear how this sounds in the proper mix. Oh shit! Oh, we're getting raided! Uh, Professor Bloom, thank you for the raid. Pleasure to, uh, see y'all. Professor Bloom, pleasure to meet you. Uh, I don't believe I've had the pleasure of watching you yet. Kaji Oniyama, thank you for the follow. Really appreciate that. Uh, wow. So, uh, didn't expect that. So, uh, welcome, everybody. Now, if only I wasn't doing such a dry stream, but what are you gonna do? A tropa. Everwood, I think is the name, uh, and how to fix, because I see you ahead, I'm not going to wait for the notification to pop up. Thank you all for following, really appreciate that. So, what we are doing here today is I am showing you a, uh, drum plugin that not many people know about, because we need more variety in music. We need people to use drum plugins that nobody's ever heard of. Also, Professor Bloom, yourself, thank you for the follow, really appreciate that. So, I'm trying to show off uh, something nobody's ever seen before. Uh, Hoshizora Aria, thank you for the follow. Wow, really spoiled here. Real grateful. Yeah, so, uh, if only you had done this earlier because I was actually, uh, we're actually sort of at the, uh, later half of the stream. I've pretty much already gone over the plugin, but, uh, whatever the case, uh... Yeah, I might as well play the full song again, uh... Well, song. I should probably warn you all that this is, uh... A song... That I... Can barely even say I composed. This was all just default MIDI from a bunch of plugins that I use on a regular basis. Also, thank you for the Hydrate Aria. Appreciate that. So, uh, yeah. Here's this, uh, basic, stupid, uh, silly riff that I came up with so I could show off, uh, the drum plugin without distracting from the drums. So, I'll let you take a listen to that while I, uh, hydrate some more.
So yeah, that's a song that I quote unquote wrote. So uh yeah. Not the most exciting thing in the world, but it shows off uh, the plugin. And no, I'm not going to release that separately. There's zero point to that whatsoever. Because again, I can't even really claim that I wrote it. So anyways, uh, apparently, uh, I may have to actually look into using the snare properly a little more. Because damn, that sounded good mixed with the uh, right out of the box one. Let's try another one. 14 by 6 brass, why not? And the problem that only comes with hard samples, so... Not the biggest difference in the world, but... Let's hear it in the mix. Actually, on second thought, I have another idea. I'm going to swap out samples as the song plays, just to see how they all sound, individually. Why not? Fuck it. Okay, this one in particular I really like the sound of, but... Obviously we don't have, uh... Still have a lot of samples to uh, check out, so we might as well just keep going. <laughs> You know what? I actually like this sample the best. I think this is the one I would use if I were to, uh, actually use the s snare layering technique, uh. Because like I said a second ago, uh, that's actually not something I usually do. I usually prefer to just stick to one sample at a time. So the thing is, uh, apparently they didn't design that with that in mind. They apparently really wanted you to use a one-shot to layer it with. The snares tend to sound kind of weak on their own in all of these sample packs. So, uh, I guess it's, uh, something, uh, something I only do experiment with off-stream. But, that'll, uh, come when it comes. So yeah, that's, uh, triggering a snare. So yeah, I think I will still err on the side of uh, using the original sample as opposed to the uh, layer sample. Nothing wrong with adding a little extra something something to it, but... Whatever the case. That's a snare, but... Now for the kick. In a lot of ways, that was actually, uh... What the sample layering is usually meant to help out with. It's usually the kick that they do this sort of thing with. Except for the fact that, uh... Again, uh... I was only using, uh... a subharmonic sort of addition, but... Might as well experiment. Why not? Yeah, Metal Kick Drum Kicks Pack. Really living up to their name there. <laughs> nice names here. Inferno, Darkness, Lust, Dying, Sorrow, Lethal, Fate. Yeah, we'll start with the Weevil, why not? A lot of other male VTubers would probably have gotten lost first, but nah. I'm say so, dude. That's not what I'm about.
Yeah, yeah, you all laugh at me for saying I'm say so, but does anybody really like a male coomer? Come on. That's a little less this thing. I don't gotta muscle in on that net. Uh, awaken, awaken. Uh, speaking of muscling in on people's nitters, I actually did want to sing Death Clock at one point, because I love that band. I like a lot of their songs, especially the first Death album. Season 1 of Metal Local, this was my favorite show back in the day. But then along comes Mr. Fucking Superhero, goddamn Power Nelson, and it turns out that he can actually growl like a motherfucker. So, on one hand, that was discouraging, but on the other, he... Nobody died and made him the only person ever who can fucking sing Death Clock karaoke, so... Maybe I might actually make it happen. Alright, let's do a little compare and contrast. Yes, Tokyo was indeed a very nice character, uh... Although I personally always identify with Pickles, but... I don't know what that says about me. Then again, it probably says a lot considering that this is one of the exceedingly few streams I'm doing where I'm sober, so... Take that as you will. And the uh, rock and roll clown, uh... I don't know if I can pull that one off. I'm, uh... My high range isn't the best. Yeah, not usually a tropa, but this time I am, because it's Monday night. I mean, I might have a couple after the stream, because I got nothing going on tomorrow. Tomorrow's a day off. But then again, maybe I'll save it for Wednesday, because Wednesday is going to be the real interesting stream. Wednesday will be my first horror game stream. So my new followers have apparently chosen a really good time to uh, check me out, because Wednesday... I will be playing a horror game. Only downside is it's not going to be a famous one. It's going to be one that just released a couple of weeks ago. Symphony of Seven Souls. You are free to look that up on your own. Because again, uh, I tend to prefer to play games that fit my theme a bit more. I'm some medieval idiot who just so happens to know... I've been timeline hopping, that's the whole reason I know about heavy metal in the first place. But yes, uh, very uh, gothic sort of game. Your main weapon is a violin, so of course I was all over that, horror game or not. And uh, I don't want to say scared, but I startle very easily. Like, if I hear a, if I hear a weird noise from the other half of the house, then I'm generally going to think, oh shit, am I, is somebody trying to break in? And then I just look and I realize I'm one of the fucking cats, but, uh, yeah. So I'm not necessarily scared, but I startle very easily. Which is ironic because I actually like horror aesthetics. I like looking like... I don't flinch at gore all that much, and if I look at a creepy space, the first thing I usually think is, Holy shit, that would make an amazing album cover. Uh, Corpse Paint Alts, uh... I don't know. I'll have to ask my mama about that one. Eventually. My mama's damn expensive. But, never say never. Then again, I could go cheap and just make it a accessory, but... We'll see when we see. Oh, no wonder it's so fucking loud. I forgot to mute these. Okay. So apparently I've been fucking it up. I forgot that these two things were still a thing.
that's sounding a little more like a finished drum sound right there. Yeah, but then again, I prefer my own reverb. We'll do a little compare and contrast. Now that's more my style. So yeah, the trash mic on this particular uh, sample set is a uh, sort of 80s gated reverb, which is fine for that application, but I myself prefer my usual modern plate sound. So yeah, that's a score on that, and I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about as far as uh, this... Uh, drum uh, sample set goes. It's very nice overall. Uh, again, this drum sample set is on sale if you're interested at the moment. Uh, Labor Day sale. It's only going to last a few more hours, so if you really liked it, then I would say drop it. I don't know how many musicians are in the audience right now, but again, I can vouch for it. Uh, although if you're after a uh, I would say stick with Cult 2 if you're into more multi-genre sort of ideas, but if you're specifically into metal, then I would recommend Speed Metal, because that's uh, the one that you can mold a little more into a uh, modern sort of tone, should you uh, decide to uh, use it for that purpose. So, uh, yeah, let's get away from the doll stream. Uh, let's have a little... Uh... So yeah, here's something you haven't seen in a bit. This is, uh, we're going to talk a bit. Why the fuck not? I don't usually do this. Usually I just uh, call it a night and just say good night. But I figured I might as well uh, have a little uh, talk with some of the new, uh, some of my new followers. Why not? And, uh, yes, black metal is indeed one of the more fun genres. Uh, it's one that I'm too familiar with. Uh, plus, it's one that I arguably don't even do. Like, a lot of people will insist that if you're not... Like, even at the dirtiest, like, even with the dirtiest sorts of, uh, plugins, like, the dirtiest presets of that plugin, like, I still could barely manage, like, it still sounded too good for a lot of death metal fan. I mean, a lot of black metal fans' tastes, like, uh, some people think that if you didn't record it with a fucking 8-track, like, in a tool shed, then it's not actually black metal. So I think if I were to ever actually release a black metal song, I'd probably just call it black and death metal just to prevent myself from that. And sure it is all about the scuff, but generally I prefer uh, I prefer at least a little production value. A little uh, rhythm. A little professionalism. And yeah, actual murder, uh, no. I may be a bad motherfucker, but I'm not willing to risk my fucking legal standing just for the sake of looking that much harder. Call me a fake, but that's just a score on that. Not what I'm about. But, yeah, that's about that. But, metal is not all I do, actually. Uh, if you look at my uh, page, uh, I'm pretty sure in my Twitter bio I should have the uh, link to my uh, music YouTube channel. I have two YouTube channels, one for uh, dumping my Twitch VODs. But the other has all my music on it, which I personally think is a lot more important. And you will see that metal is not all I do, actually. I've dabbled in a lot of genres. Uh, as a matter of fact, a few, uh, my very last stream was actually me revolved around me making hip-hop beats. Quite the contrast from uh, this particular uh, sound, I would say. A lot easier for somebody in my skill set, too. Especially if you're doing it uh, the old school way, where it's pretty much nothing but... Nothing but samples, but, uh, even then, like, arguably all my music is nothing but samples, but even by that standard, it's easier than I'm usually used to. But again, that's, uh, not music I'm going to release very soon. I have another project waiting in the wings that I'm going to be, uh, that's going to use those tracks, and I might release them after that. But, uh, in any case, 
So yeah, that's the bottom line on that. I don't just do metal, I do a lot of genres. Uh. Although funnily enough, the ones uh, that came out the best were the uh, classical ones, I would actually say. I've done some uh, orchestral songs, too. And I honestly think those came out very, very nice, if you ask me. Very atmospheric. Although that said, uh, those are my two comforts, metal and orchestral, but uh, I've experimented a bit, too. Uh, like, my very last release song was actually an electro song, EDM. Which is a genre that I'm actually completely unfamiliar with, for the main reason being I... Don't know what the hell I'm doing with synthesizers still. Still didn't, and you can probably hear it in the song, but yes, uh, that was my last song. It was called Ignible Industry. It was EDM, it was... A lot of it, uh, like a lot of my mixing was still just me pretending I was still doing a metal song in a lot of ways. Just because, uh, that's easily, uh, one of the better ways to, uh, make things easier when you're doing another genre. Just, uh... Try to... let your usual instincts guide you. Especially in your May genre. But, yes, that's, uh... That's squat that. So, uh... I think before I leave, I'll just go ahead and uh, open the floor to questions. If anybody has anything they want to ask me about... Anything within reason. Within reason, of course. A lot of silliness going on on Twitch recently, and, uh, you never know who's actually, uh, who actually has your best interest in arts, and who is just trying to get you banned for shits and giggles. And yet I'm still very trepidatious about returning to YouTube. Because, uh, yeah, that's a fun fact about me. The first month of, uh, my streaming career, I actually stayed on YouTube. But, uh, I got sick of the, uh... <laughs> Yeah, don't ask me my three sizes, especially because I don't actually know them. They don't measure me. They just sort of guessed. Uh, see, uh, this outfit actually isn't custom tailored, funnily enough. Uh, might as well show you if I can uh, make it happen. Alright, uh, some things I gotta fix. There we go. That should make it happen. So, uh, yeah. This is, uh, my outfit. This right here. Just back away from the camera a bit, and there we go. This was not custom tailored. This is actually... Except for the belts, this is all just standard issue, uh, stuff from my home kingdom. And, uh, St. Gold, I'm actually glad you asked that. Uh, I will be using... I will try to use Cultrums too in my next metal track, uh... As a matter of fact, I've actually been strongly considering uh, taking my music so far and sort of uh, remixing and remastering it, because uh, there was a lot of uh, experimentation that I had to use. Uh, a lot of experimentation that I was doing up until uh, very recently. But I think I've settled into enough of a groove that I think I have what I think are suitable final uh, tracks, uh, final mix sort of ideas. So yes, my next metal track, either way, will use Cold Drums too. And, uh, yeah. See, it's funny that you actually put it at the knives, because, uh... The knives are actually not really my preference as far as a weapon goes. Uh, they're really my absolute emergency. There are actually three main weapons I use. Uh, well, I'm glad that you liked the basic demo. Just wait till you hear me using an actual song, Saint. You'll love it. But yes, uh, three weapons... If you look to my other hip, my right hip, that's actually the holster for my flintlock pistol. My gun. You need one of those, you gotta be prepared. And then there's my third weapon. Which you actually don't see because it's actually hanging off to the side of me. Yes, uh, see, I should probably mention that I come from a medieval kingdom. Like, uh, people have given me shit, uh, I'm actually, uh, I actually know a, uh, Gun nuts, for want of a more politically correct way to put it. Uh, and that gave me shit for still insisting on using flintlocks. Because they like the cutting edge weapons, but... I had to tell them. I come from a medieval fantasy kingdom. I'm lucky to have flintlocks as it is. <laughs> Amosexuals, that's hilarious. Uh, uh, 
Ariel, Ariel Noriposi, uh, pleasure to see you. Uh, it's a uh, pity that uh, we're actually sort of winding down here, unfortunately, but I'm so glad to see you. So uh, I might as well introduce her, too. Uh, so I don't have a shout out command, but yeah, Ariel Noriposi, everybody. This is a uh, new VTuber just debuted back on Saturday. My main disciple, my star student in a lot of ways. I, uh, she is a fellow musician, uh, mainly composer, but also a singer. And, uh, I actually went to the trouble of teaching her how to, uh, make her songs sound better. I, uh, showed her some plugins, showed her, uh, just a lot of, uh, nice, uh, software that made her music the best it could be. So, uh, yes. Yeah, of course I saw you there. You were one of the few people who uh, saw my tweet and actually took my threat seriously. I keep telling people to watch my friends roll away if I axe at you, which is uh, something I was about to mention. Uh, yes, my axe. My main weapon is actually an axe. Come to think about it, I should probably just go ahead and show you guys my axe. Uh, see, it's hanging off to the side on my wall over there, but I figured I might as well just uh, go ahead and... So, uh, my beloved axe. But I gotta put you on a loading screen again, so please give me a moment. Whatever, Saint, I do what I please. So, yes, look at this. It's my axe. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's capable of cutting a motherfucker's head off with no effort. I love this thing. This is my axe. There are many like it, but this one is mine. I fucking love axes. This is my main weapon right here. I love this fucking thing. Just look at it. Chop chop. So yeah, if I get in a fight, this is the first thing I break out. I fucking love it. And yes... So, this is me fully strapped. Right here. My gun, my knives, my axe. All the items I would ever need to properly get in a fight. Well, uh, see, the thing is, area. Uh, that's not exactly accurate. Uh, the gun is, a uh, White mate. I am not cosplaying Axel. I am cosplaying Soul Bad Guy. Look at this. So, uh, yeah, for those of you who are wondering why I have a shitload of belt on my outfit. Again, that is not standard issue on these, uh... I'm mostly wearing standard issue High Gang Kingdom fatigues, but... All these belts. These are all the product of my own style. I fucking love Guilty Gear. And that is my way of paying tribute to my favorite fighting game series. All the belts. I fucking love this thing. I love these things. They just immediately make it look cooler. Huh. I didn't know that at Trollbug. Good to know. I'm glad to, uh... I'm glad somebody who knows our stuff about weapons is actually able to, uh, justify that. See, uh, back in my home kingdom, people usually prefer swords, uh... Because, uh, there's a whole bounty hunters association, a lot of nigh... a lot of, uh... See, most of the, uh, knavish sort of weapon, uh... Because the thing is, like, I'm actually formally trained. I got trained at the military academy to become a bounty hunter. That's part of my story there, but, uh, no. A lot of the bounty hunters prefer swords, mostly because they're fucking rich snots who just want a little more action, or else, uh... They're more serious about combat, and the image back home is that if you're serious about combat, you need to use a sword. But, I'm plenty serious about combat, and I'll use an axe. Not just because I like the style, but also it's a lot cheaper. Like, think about it. That's less metal you gotta worry about forging. That's... Fucking, uh, wood. Like, I'm sure they're fun, just they're not for me. I like my axe. I'm stuck in my ways. Plus, uh, it's a unique setup. I got my axe. If I'm fighting at a distance, I got the flintlock. Which is, uh... Like, I probably could win a gunfight with an axe, but again, I would prefer to be smarter. Which is what the flintlock's for. But if all those fails, I still got the knives, and that's what matters. 
I was probably switch one of these over to the right so I could do some dual wielding ninja shit, but that'll come when it comes. So, at any rate, uh, that's uh, unless anybody's got any other questions. Uh, anybody else got anything they want to know? Anyone? Anyone? All right, uh, I guess not. Fine, uh, yeah, <laughs> laugh all you like. It's all funny until you find that waved at you. I'm just being theoretical. I wouldn't actually wave it at you. You're my friend. But, yeah. In any case, uh, I think that's going to be, uh, I think I'm going to call it a night there. So, uh, yeah. Thanks again, Professor... Uh, thanks again, uh... Oh shit, the raid notification went away. Well, uh... Let me see, uh... Uh, Professor Bloom, that's right. Professor Bloom. Thank you again for the raid. Still really appreciate that. I suppose I'll have to return the favor and, uh, come see you at some point. Y'all have to forgive me, just a lot of people, uh... We have a lot of people in our scene and not enough time of the day to fucking uh, watch them. So, uh, I promise I'll come watch you at some point, but I still appreciate the raid. Still very nice. And, uh, glad to hear it saying that's why I do these things. I know that there are not that many people, uh, not that many musicians around, so. At the very least, I hope, uh, even if you're not planning on becoming a musician yourself, I hope that just me talking about music is interesting, because that's just, uh, it's just what I like to do. But, yeah. This was the only scheduled music stream this week. The rest of the week is just going to be games. So, plans for the rest of the week. Like I said earlier, Wednesday will be the horror game stream. Symphony of Seven Souls. And then, uh, Thursday, actually, uh, I'm expecting that the controller that I ordered. I bought a new controller this week, uh, so yeah, I mentioned Guilty Gear, and that's because I'm a fighting game player. Especially Guilty Gear Strive. And I ordered a new arcade stick. So, uh, the controller is actually, uh, a hitbox-style controller. All buttons, uh... Specifically, it's, uh, some, uh, knockoff, uh... Well, I don't want to call it a knockoff, but it's more of a, uh, budget sort of, uh, variant. It only cost me 60 bucks, which, uh... Probably means I cut corners in some ways, but I didn't really want to plunk down, just in case I didn't end up, uh, not liking it. So, uh, yeah, $60 hitbox clone, uh, budget sort of deal. It should arrive by Thursday, if not Wednesday. So, my plan is on Friday afternoon, I will be, uh, <clears throat> doing yet another Strive stream, and, uh, that will be my test run of that. We will be, uh, playing Guilty Gear Strive with a headbox. Which sounds weird, but the thing is, uh, ever since I started using Arcade Stick, uh, I apparently can't get that good of a handle on the actual stick. Like, using the buttons, I actually love. I can barely go back to playing pad after that, but I'm just not that good at handling a stick, which is why I'm trying out a hitbox, because, uh, I also experimented with, uh, playing with a keyboard, and, uh, that actually seemed like a very good way to use it. Shut up, Saint. But, uh, yeah. To the point that I actually bought a, uh, mod, uh, so I could turn my arcade stick into a, uh, mix box sort of idea. But, uh, I was having trouble assembling it, getting it to work, so I sort of put off that project, but, uh, I might come back to it if the hitbox doesn't work out. Yeah, so I'm sure it's not on the hands, plus, uh, I'm actually fairly confident that I can make an all-button controller work. Like, a lot of people think a hitbox is weird, but I honestly think I can make it work, because, uh... When I was, uh, experimenting with playing on keyboard, the motions just seemed, like, almost natural in a way. Like, I'm pretty sure I can make it work. I think I can make it work. But I suppose we'll see on, uh, Friday. So, uh, yeah, that's the score on the rest of the week, so... Hopefully my new viewers, uh, that sounds appealing to you. 
Hopefully the regular girls will be there too, of course, but with that, I think we're finished for the night. Still really appreciate everybody coming out, checking me out. And again, very special thank you to Professor Bloom for uh, coming to uh, sharing his audience with me. Really appreciate that. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, check the traditional Twitch array target. Let's see who's on. We got Crimbo, Picky. Uh, Komodo's still going. Hinin's going Flacklock. Uh, yeah, fuck it. We'll, we'll raid Flacklock. Why not? Someone new. A new friend. Why not? All right. So we're going to raid Flacklock. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for hanging out with me. See you Wednesday for the horror stream, and let's say hello to Flacklock. Have a good night.